In today's video, we're going to cover deadheading. That's the process of removing spent blooms so you can encourage more blooms quicker and also help prevent disease and insects in your gardens. Uh, this is a really nice example of Let Freedom Ring right now. It's looking really good in the garden. Eventually, the rose will become and look like that. And at that point, that's where you wanna remove it from your garden. As I've widened out, you can see a lot of nice blooms in the garden today. Upon further inspection, I have a lot of deadheading to do, but from a distance, they look really, really good. So I encourage you to leave them on the bush as long as possible. Um, blooms like this look good from a distance. And again, you spend all that hard time working, you may as well uh, enjoy those blooms as long as possible. However, once they start to look like this, this is Hot Princess, you're gonna wanna remove them. So in today's video, we're gonna cover why you should do that. I have a much more detailed video from a couple years ago that I will link below, but let me show Show you some examples of what happens if you don't deadhead the roses in terms of disease and also pests in the garden. This is one of the best examples I can find in the garden today of why you should deadhead. I'm picking on Louise Estes, but any heavily petaled rose, uh, something like a firm, something with a lot of petals, this can happen. From a distance, you can obviously tell I have to do some deadheading. Um, the roses, you know, there's still some nice blooms, so that's something that I would leave on the bush itself. But once they start to get to something like this, this is something you're gonna to wanna to remove. What can happen on roses with a high petal count is they almost get like mummified. Um, it's called botrytis. They can become diseased. And if you remove the petals before they get to this stage, you've got less spores to contend with in the garden. So that's one reason we deadhead is just simply um, less petals in the garden to become diseased and potentially spread to other roses. And also some of these are really, especially the light colored blooms, uh, things like thrips love to stay in them. And that's a good way to get rid of a pest in that um, regard. So again, removal of spent blooms will help you, especially with disease and insect maintenance in the garden. And it also just looks better. So if I were to take out all of these blooms that are browned and um, you know not looking so good, and just left the ones that are in full bloom, the garden would look much better. So aesthetics, disease prevention, and also insects. Let me show you an example of where I've pruned in the last week or two to bring flowers to coworkers and um, people in the neighborhood where I pruned, so essentially deadheaded because I gave the bloom away, what this looks like instead of something like this. So this is another bush of Louise Estes. Again, it has some uh, really nice blooms on it still, um, but I did a lot of um, giving away of these blooms throughout the last couple weeks. And by doing that, you're removing, you know, the cane or the spent bloom. In this case, it was a nice fresh one and you're encouraging more growth. So this was cut uh, a couple weeks ago and you can see already from where I made the cut, a new cane has uh, formed. So the other reason why you want to deadhead as early as you can disease and insect prevention, but you're also starting the next cycle of blooms. That's probably the most important thing in terms of getting as many blooms out of your roses as possible. Here's another example. Again, this is uh, Marilyn Monroe. As I focus on this, this was uh, cut a couple weeks ago and you can already see that we've got some new canes coming out of the bud eyes. Uh, so in addition to the disease and insect prevention, it will also encourage blooms to come quicker. What do I mean by that? Well, roses regenerate another bloom cycle roughly every five to seven weeks. So 35 to you know, 50, 55 days later, we're gonna have another flush of roses. If you cut these blooms early, give them away, deadhead properly, the earlier you do that, the quicker the next round will come along. So now the question is, what happens if you just don't get around to it, or in my case, you've got so many, it's hard to keep on top of. What happens if you don't deadhead? We've already mentioned you might be more susceptible to disease and insects, um, and it doesn't look as good, but does it really matter? Is the rose just going to never produce blooms the rest of the summer? And the answer to that is no. Let me give you an example to show you what I mean. This is what happens if you don't deadhead. Mother Nature's still gonna find a way to get rid of that old bloom and produce new ones in the future. So while we really stress to do it for the health and maintenance of your garden, the overall aesthetics, and for me, it's just so you can see another round of blooms quicker. I think for me, that's why I do it. If you don't get around to it because life catches up with you, 
don't worry about it. What will happen is the pedals will fall off eventually. Might be harder on a variety with a lot of pedals like you saw with Luis Estes, but eventually it will fall off. This stem will actually die back and new growth will generate. You can see this on Randy Scott. The pedals are already gone. We've got a new bud eye down here and then one around this side as well. And you can see uh, other spots on the, uh, the bush, there's new bud eye starting. Um, again, just below where the spent bloom has fallen off. A lot of times we'll mention to go down to a set of five leaves. Um, again, that can help with a more sturdy cane, but I don't like to get into the weeds too much, literally. <laughs> um, this is a set of three leaves and you can see this is a perfectly healthy cane. If you go lower on the bush, um, here's a set of five leaves, there's another cane there. So they do tend to be from a thicker part of the cane. So overall they have the potential to be sturdier, but um, this just shows you if you don't get around to it, don't sweat it too much. Um, look at all the purple growth lower on the bush itself those are new canes getting ready to generate in another five to seven weeks they will produce blooms so that's it from the garden i'll leave you with a few last open blooms this is a let freedom ring the garden is really on its way out this is memorial day weekend 2022 um, our peak bloom is usually in mid-may so we are just getting past peak but even a full bloom rose is still gorgeous in the garden. This is Claire Elise. Comment below, do you deadhead? Obviously I try to, but sometimes I can't always get to it. So hopefully that video shows you why we do it. Again, aesthetics, insect and disease prevention in the garden. And if you don't get to it, again, your roses will be just fine. You will have another bloom cycle in five to seven weeks. It might just be toward the tail end of that instead of quicker. I mentioned I'll leave you with Let Freedom Ring, but I also want to show you what's going on next to the Rose Garden. These sunflowers, started these from seed back in early April. They'll make a nice addition to the garden here over the course of June and July. Have a great one, everyone.